Hello, I'm Stephen Thomas with BizTalkGurus.com. Today I'm going to give you a first look at the WCF adapter that's available in BizTalk Server 2006 R2. Uh, this demo is going to last about 10 minutes, and keep in mind that anything you see here is subject to change in later releases of BizTalk 2006 R2. I'm going to start by setting up a simple scenario. Um, in this case, we have an orchestration that receives an in message, which uh, has a schema called numbers in. We have a simple map that's going to add two of the numbers that are in the input schema and give us a resulting output schema called sum out. And over here on the left, we have a request response port already set up. Uh, this is a public port and it has an operation called sum. And this is what is going to be used for the uh, WCF service. Uh, to get things started, I'm going to go ahead and deploy this solution. This is going to take just a second here. And this is deploying the code. And the application name is sample WCF demo. And we deployed successfully. So once we have our sample deployed, let's go ahead under tools and look at the BizTalk WCF service publishing wizard. Now, anyone that's used the web publishing wizard in previous versions of BizTalk will notice these first few screens look very similar. Uh, here we're going to publish our BizTalk orchestration as a WCF service. We're going to accept the default for the assembly DLL. And here we're going to list any public ports we have in that orchestration. Uh, don't forget to make your, mark your ports as public if you want to expose them. Uh, if you forget that step, you will get a message here that says there are no public ports available. In this case, we're public, so we have the process port. Go ahead and select next. We're going to leave the default namespace. We're going to accept the defaults for the WCF service location. We do want to check the box to allow anonymous access to our WCF service. Uh, since we're working locally here, uh, anonymous access is what we're looking for. And here, you'll definitely see a screen that looks different from uh, traditional web service, uh, the web service publishing wizard. Um, here we have the option to select our transport type, uh, whether we want the basic HTTP binding, the WS HTTP binding, or if you want to have a custom binding that we define on our own. Um, anything you do here under the basic and WS um, HTTP bindings, you can also define in a custom binding if you choose. Um, so the custom binding gives you kind of the ultimate flexibility. Uh, for our dem demo, we're just going to choose the basic HTTP. And we're going to go ahead and check this checkbox and allow the uh, wizard to go ahead and create a receive location for us. It will create a request response receive location. And we just have to tell it what application to put that in. We're going to select our sample WCF demo. Go ahead and click Next. We have our confirmation screen and click Create. And in just a moment here, we'll have our WCF service. And that's finished. Uh, it tells us the location that it stored the service at. And click Finish. Let's hop into IIS real quick and take a look at what that service looks like. Um, here's our BizTalk service instance um, service screen. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It tells us right here what we need to do in order to build .NET code that can utilize this service. Uh, we just call the service utility and pass in the address with the WSDL. And that's going to go ahead and generate for us the configuration information for the app.config file. And it's going to go ahead and generate us a c -sharp proxy class that we can utilize to uh, make our calls. So we're going to go ahead and copy this and go to a Visual Studio 2005 command prompt and go ahead and paste that in there. And just like that, it has downloaded the metadata from our web service or our WCF service and created for us the BizTalk service instance CS in our output.config. So we're going to go ahead and utilize this in a .NET tester app, which I have created in the same solution. Um, all this tester app does is simple WinForm that takes the number one and the number two, 
you hit the sum button, it's going to go interact with BizTalk through WCF and return us the sum results of our data. Let's first off come over here and add existing items. We want to add the two items we just created. And let's go ahead to all files. We're going to add our C sharp class and our output.config. Let's go ahead and take a look at our output.config file first. This contains all our WCF binding information automatically for us. Now, you can see here it says basic HTTP binding. If we would have selected the WS HTTP binding, we would see that kind of information here. And if we would have selected custom, we would have to go into the custom and define what kind of bindings we want and additional properties on that. So we want to make sure that we get all this configuration information into the standard app.config. So I'm going to go ahead over here. And I have an existing app.config from the last time I ran this. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. There's our app.config. And I already have the binding information in here, but we're going to delete it and re-add. Just like that. Again, this is the binding information out of the output.config file that is automatically generated for us. We're now adding that to the app.config file of our tester application. So go ahead and save that. Now we want to look at the code that we're going to have behind our button. So here under sum, let's take a look at that. We first need to create a input message and then define what an output message is going to be from our WCF service. Um, so I went ahead and copy and pasted in the code for this from a existing um, example. Um, here we have our numbers in schema, which we're creating an instance of, and we're returning our sum out, so we're creating an instance of that. Then we're going to go ahead and set our number one and our number two on our input uh, schema, and setting that to the text values from our form. And then here we have our sample WCF demo process, process port client. This is defined inside our uh, BizTalk proxy class, and this is what you need to create in order to communicate with the web service, or the WCF service. This is very similar to what calls look like when we use um, web services. And here, once we create that instance, we will see that we have our sum uh, operation defined here. If we had multiple operations, you would see that listed here as properties of the process port client. In our case, we want to call sum, and we're going to pass in our input and return our output message, and then we want to display the results of the output message back into our text box. So that's what this code is doing here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, um, not really anything new from a um, web services and WCF perspective. Uh, pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and save all that. Go ahead and build this, make sure everything builds, and everything looks fine there. Now, before we start running this service, or this tester app, let's take a look at our BizTalk server admin. Go ahead and do a refresh here, and you can see our WCF demo, which is our application we've deployed. You'll see here a receive port that was created for us with a single receive location. Let's go ahead and take a look at this, because this is um, new functionality with R2. You will see here as the adapter type, we have our WCF basic HTTP binding, and it's running in a BizTalk server isolated host. Uh, it just defaults to the pass-through pipelines. Let's go ahead and take a look at our configuration we have for the uh, basic HTTPs. Uh, we have an address URI. And then we have additional properties that we can add to this, such as binding information, security, whether we want message level or transport level security. Uh, in this case, we're going to leave none. And then here is a pretty neat part, which is new with R2. We have the ability to define what part of our WCF service we want as the actual message body. We can have our standard body, which is going to take off the SOAP headers and just submit the body of the message. 
we can go ahead and select envelope, which is going to give us the entire soap envelope along with the body, or we can go ahead and define our own custom X path. So an exam and take our example, if we only wanted number one to be our actual BizTalk message, we could define an XPath expression here and be able to extract that message out. Um, this is pretty neat and this is a uh, you know, new functionality with Dart2. Go ahead and click OK. And here again, you know, we have the other um, options such as WSHTP and custom isolated as well. Anything that would use IES, of course, would have to be in an isolated host which is why you have custom isolated versus WCF processes that might not be running in IIS that could just utilize the custom. So that's the difference between the two there. Go ahead and click OK. We need to go to our orchestration and set our host properties. So under bindings, uh, looks like we're already set there. So we should just be able to start our application. And once this is running, we should be able to run our test app. Let's jump over here. I'm going to run our test app. Take just a second here. And here's our little test application. So we're just going to say we're going to pass in 5 and 15. And we're going to click sum. This is actually going out to our WCF service through BizTalk and should be returning our results here in just a second. And just like that, you can see we get our 20 back. Uh, let's go ahead and test it again. This time we'll use 3 and 4 and click sum and this time we have 7. So as you can see, it's pretty simple and straightforward to expose your BizTalk orchestrations as WCF services. And with BizTalk R2, you have a lot of flexibility to leverage the whole WCF uh, framework to uh, really build some powerful applications. So again, I just want to iterate this was a quick look at the WCF adapter with BizTalk 2006 R2. Uh, thanks a lot.